Thank you, Adrian, and thank you, Ashik, and thank you, David, and thank you to the COP26 People Summit team for giving the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space the opportunity to share some of our research. Now, as we all sadly know by now, the US military is the single largest consumer of fossil fuels in the world and the single largest emitter of carbon emissions in the world. Its carbon emissions exceed those of entire nations like Denmark and Portugal. So we have the Biden administration now saying that they will mandate slashing carbon emissions. But my question is, um, the Pentagon, in contrast, what they, it's sort of a greenwashing because the Pentagon is now saying that they're going to transition to biofuels and electric vehicles and biofuels in their ships, trucks, and aircraft. So what is missing from this climate calculus, and here's where I'm going to share a screen, is that it's not going to stop the Pentagon from decimating populations of whales and dolphins or killing coral reefs and dredging coastal ecosystems. Our planet's oxygen supply is inextricably linked to the health of marine ecosystems. When coral reefs, coastal ecosystems, and rainforests are killed, it sets off a cascade of systems failures, coral, plankton, algae, trees, and the soil biome that would otherwise be capturing carbon and producing oxygen are destroyed. So as far as the Pentagon is concerned with its mission, the ecocide will go on. So, so what if it's now running on electric vehicles and biofuels? As long as the military's mission is to dominate sea, earth, sky, and space, biofuels and electric vehicles will not stop the Pentagon from crushing the planet's inherent ability, its inherent ability to regenerate itself in the face of climate catastrophe. Now, to make matters worse, the Pentagon is undergoing this massive paradigm shift in the way war is waged. And it will require a series of so-called smart grids to enclose the planet in 5G and sonar. This new way of waging war will mean that earthbound mission control centers are moving into space. Brick and mortar facilities are moving to the cloud. The military base manned with thousands of troops and armed with tanks and machine guns, you know, like what we saw in Afghanistan is now considered passe, which may explain why the US withdrew from that old school war so hastily and without finesse, to say the least. The military base is being replaced by what has been called a high-speed kill web. It uses information as the primary weapon of war. It will enable empire to rain terror down on any spot of the earth. A swarm of drones, hypersonic missiles, submarine torpedoes, bombers, and all with the ease of calling an Uber. This is why demonizing China is so essential because only a foe as formidable and distant as China would justify the hyper costly infrastructure overhaul required. War with China and by extension with its ally Russia requires the US to pour far more, far more resources into military fantasies than that which would be required than your usual bombing of a small third world country. These high tech profits will make the money made by Halliburton during the 20 years in Afghanistan look like peanuts. In order to build this infrastructure for this new way of war, 
reefs are being dredged and forests are being raised throughout Asia and the Pacific. An ambitious system of missile deployment facilities, satellite launch pads, radar tracking stations, aircraft carrier ports, live fire training areas, and other facilities for satellite controlled war are being erected to embody the next century of industrial scale institutional violence. The new infrastructure will include a grid of thousands of satellites launched into the heavens. It will also be comprised of a grid throughout the Indo-Pacific made up of mini bases, such as airstrips and rocket launch pads on as many islands as possible, indicated by the red circles here. Here is a drone. Oh. It's also on the surface of the ocean, it's also a grid of 5G devices. Underwater, it is a grid of sonar devices. And here's a drone loaded with sono buoys that will be dropped into the ocean. Sonar devices like these will transmit whale killing sonar signals to 5G sensors on the ocean surface. The 5G sensors will then relay the signal to land and satellite receivers. Just to give you an idea of how lethal sonar is to whales, when low frequency active sonar is activated in Hawaii, it has made the sperm whales all the way in Australia stop eating for two days. This is how fatally disruptive sonar is to whales and dolphins. It is equally detrimental for their mating, birthing, hunting, voyaging, everything they do. Saturating the ocean with sonar will kill the ocean. Nonetheless, this marine holocaust has been cynically dubbed the smart ocean. And here's an unmanned helicopter loaded with sono buoys that will also be dropped into the ocean. The idea is to overlay the entire earth with several layers of grids that will transform the planet into a real life 3D chessboard. It is part of a master plan called the Joint All Domain Command and Control or JADC2. At the heart of the JADC2 is a data storage cloud called JEDI now in development by Amazon and Microsoft, which happens to be one of the sponsors of this year's COP26. Other cloud companies such as Google, Oracle, and IBM have a chance to also win a slice of this deal worth tens of billions of dollars. The inaugural exercises to help develop this new gridded warfare were completed last summer in Hawaii. The new technology linked Navy and Marine Corps, sea, air, land, space, and cyber weapons spanning 17 time zones. Troops practiced blowing lots of things up in Hawaii's marine habitats by clicking on their laptops at Pearl Harbor, which is what we see here. In one exercise, Marines on Oahu struck a ship and sank it with missiles launched from a robot truck off the coast of the neighbor island of Kauai. <clears throat> Hold on. So the oceans sequester an astonishing amount of carbon, 2 billion metric tons per year. And much of the sequestration is due to the presence of whales. Whales are absolutely essential to the ecological harmony of our oceans. And as such, they are the primary species for mitigating and delaying climate catastrophe. Uh, there's a marine biologist named Asha DeVos, and she provides us much uh, information and research on how whales do this. So as whales dive to the depths to feed and come up to the surface to breathe, they actually release enormous fecal plumes this whale pump, as scientists call it, brings essential nutrients from the depths to the surface waters where they stimulate the growth of phytoplankton that form the basis of all marine life and food chains. 
Because of phytoplankton photosynthesis, the oceans generate more oxygen than all the rainforests of the world combined. And this is especially true now, now that forests have begun emitting more carbon than they are capturing. In fact, 10 UNESCO World Heritage Site forests have begun releasing more carbon than they are absorbing. This alarming development places ever more importance on our oceans to function truly as the lungs of our planet. Once whales die, their carcasses transport carbon to the deep oceans. Every, <clears throat> every year it is estimated that whale carcasses transport 190,000 tons of carbon to the bottom of the sea. That's the same amount of carbon as that that is emitted by 80,000 cars per year. One of the most ecocidal developments of modern warfare is the delusionary need for perpetual year round military practice in our oceans. We essentially have nonstop war now taking place in our oceans and we have for a decade, even with no war officially being, being waged but war is being waged. That is a war on all the living spirits that populate the undersea community and enable our oceans to support life on earth. The whales, dolphins, turtles, crabs, sea horses, jellyfish, algae, seaweed, eels, plankton, manta rays, and coral. Naval exercises are the cause of tens of thousands of whale and dolphin deaths per year. Pentagon documents estimate that the number of injuries and deaths caused by war practice around the Mariana Islands alone, just around the Mariana Islands, will add up to around 150,000 individuals for the 12 years between 2015 and 2027. They estimate that the number of injuries and deaths of whales and dolphins that took place in the Gulf of Alaska was over 182,000 over a five year period. Because there are hundreds of naval exercises throughout the, the Indo-Pacific every year, we can easily extrapolate that the number of fatally injured whales and dolphins to be around 100,000 per year. And that's not even counting the devastating impacts that will take place once the smart ocean is installed and operating. Basically, what we have here is the global economy is being organized around militarism. The US seems to think it can go about doing this while it simultaneously addresses the climate crisis, but that's not possible. You can't have it both ways. A weaponized Pacific is a dead Pacific and a dead Pacific is a dead planet. The only way forward toward a livable future is through authentic climate cooperation between China and the US. Because the people of the world want life. The people of the world don't want the oceans and the heavens militarized and weaponized. The people of the world want peace. And I close now and hand it over to Lisa with the thought that the word Pacific means peace. Thank you.